まあ、キーティー。First of all, I'm going to start this off by welcoming you all to your additional video for the week. In exchange, you get a jab to the jaw and a punch to the gut. For this video, we're looking at the 10 exact moments that fans quit watching the TNA product for good. So the key word here is moments, not an actual storyline, not because you hated Rob the Roider, an actual moment where people change the channel for good. Got it? Good. And in case any of you ask, yes, I will be checking out Slammiversary as I'm hoping for some returns from the past. Now let me kick your ass. Number 10, Samoa Joe vs. Kurt Angle. What? This is a list of moments that people quit watching TNA. Surely this is one of the best things TNA ever did. Why is this one it? Well, shut up or I'll smack you one, I'm gonna tell you. Through the Hawks' extensive research, I found out that a lot of people hated the outcome of their first match at TNA Genesis 2006, and a lot of people tuned out. Kurt would agree with me too. Samoa Joe was on a massive 18 month undefeated streak when TNA signed Kurt Angle. They had them face off at Genesis 2006 in Angle's first pay per view match. And whilst the match is a classic, Kurt won and ended the undefeated streak, which upset some people. They were trying to watch TNA as an alternative, and they'd just seen TNA sign a WWE wrestler and promptly have him beat their guy straight away. It's not the best look for TNA when it comes to focusing on their own talent. More of a nitpicky one, but I get where people are coming from with this. Number 9, Tommy Dreamer beats AJ Styles. Over to 2011 for this one. Tommy Dreamer randomly jumped Styles and hit him with a pile driver. It was revealed that Tommy Dreamer was just being used to do the bidding of Immortal, one of the many TNA factions. So on to TNA Sacrifice 2011. They had a horrible match because Dreamer was out of shape. Well, actually, that's not why. He always is. The match was just stupid. Why was AJ Styles struggling so much to beat Tommy Dreamer in 2011? Bully Ray was meant to interfere to help Tommy, but he screwed up, and Tommy wins the belt and beat AJ Styles with a pile driver through the table. Tommy Dreamer beats AJ Styles on pay per view in 2011. Yeah, this one made me feel a bit sick because AJ Styles was supposed to be Mr. TNA, so why is he losing to Tommy Dreamer of all people? Number 8, Samoa Joe vs. The Pope feud. This whole storyline was enough to make any normal person change the channel, but it contains one or two moments which made this qualify for the List. The Pope was upset that someone had been videotaping him in private. He was spending the fans' money on weird things like strip clubs and pit bulls. He was apparently buying them for the kids in the neighborhood. Samoa Joe called him out on his bullshit and said he's been checking with the charities and orphanages and he's found that the Pope has not been donating the money or the product. What the hell is this? So we're supposed to believe that Samoa Joe's been running around orphanages now? Pope reveals he's been keeping the pit bulls at his house so he can participate in dog fights. What a wrestling storyline we have here. And people were genuinely pissed that Joe had been reduced to this. It then got worse as it was revealed that Okada was Samoa Joe's secret cameraman. He was the Green Hornet. Pope started trying to perform miracles on the fans. This feud was still going on after months for some reason. It was already stupid, but it somehow got even worse now because the Pope held Okada hostage at knife point while slamming the mic into his head. It then turned out that the Pope was using a fake knife as he stuck it into his own throat and it bent. Someone in the background is screaming, haha, tricked you, tricked you. The Pope strung Okada up backstage and smashed him in the gut of a baton. Amongst many questions, I'm wondering how the Pope's managed to string him up backstage before Joe caught up to them, despite his weight. Yeah, this whole storyline was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Joe tried to sell it, but you could tell from the look on his face, he knew it was cringe inducing. A man dressed as the Green Hornet strung up and getting bashed in the gut by a Pope or a pimp, and there's also an angry Samoan for some reason. Samoa Joe and Pope fans turned it off, and other people turned it off because of how dumb it was. Number 7, Val Venus beats Christopher Daniels on pay per view. I get that Christopher Daniels may not be everybody's cup of tea, especially at the time of this match happening, but to anyone who's been a long time TNA fan, this one would have hurt because they saw Daniels in his prime having incredible matches in the early days of TNA, and they saw him as someone who put the company on the map. For this one, we have to go to 2010, and there's a lot of that on this list. In fact, this one starts just one week after the Hawks does TNA debut. Daniels hadn't been booked like anything important in TNA for a long time at this point. He kept getting fired and rehired, but TNA fans still wanted to see him. They never Had anything good for him to do though, unless it involved AJ Styles. The former Val Venus, now going as Sean Morley, was one of the TNA WWE Monday Night War hirings. Morley had been a good fit in the Attitude Era, but that was more than 10 years before this. He was now bold and hadn't done anything notable in a decade. He revealed he was no longer a porn star and he'd come to TNA to direct pornos instead and create a film division in TNA. Daniels interrupted his promo and he looked happy to see Morley for some reason. Daniels started pitching a film idea before beating Morley down. I think he was supposed to be a hill, but the crowd cheered. His beat down on Venus. Daniels told him to take his crap and get out of the TNA company. Soon after, Venus wakes up and he beats Daniels out of the ring. And just like that, we are given a pay per view match at Genesis 
10. So a terrible build, and surprise, surprise, a not so good match. Val Venus, now shirtless, no longer has his godlike body. He might as well have asked cab driver David Jung to wrestle this match in his place, as nobody would be able to tell the difference. They kept trying to push him like a former Val Venus character that was adored by the ladies. The highlight of this was Daniels threatening to slap Brooke Hogan, the Hawks daughter. An evenly contested 9 minute match, Morley struggled to hit his finish of the money shot, but he did eventually connect to win his first ever TNA match. You could hear the TNA fans booing in the background. This match offended a lot of TNA fans. Val Venus had no business coming to TNA in 2010 looking like that and beating a TNA original. A week after the Hogan TNA debut and the fans had already made their minds up and were changing the channel. It's not the only bad thing to happen on this pay-per-view though. Number 6, Claire Lynch. The whole storyline was terrible, but there was a particular in-ring segment that was worse than the rest of it. The story here is Daniels and Kazarian were trying to blackmail AJ Styles as they had pictures of him sleeping with some lady. And it's because of that lady this whole thing fell apart. Because all the performers did alright, it was all let down by Claire Lynch. It turned out that Claire Lynch was a druggie who AJ Styles and Dixie had been protecting. But Claire Lynch was now claiming that she was pregnant and the baby belonged to AJ Styles. She couldn't act. She looked like she'd been hit in the face with a spade. And her voice was like nails on a chalkboard. She kept screaming, do the right thing. AJ as she was on the verge of tears. The whole thing was unbelievable as AJ is a religious family man so why would he chuck everything away for the likes of her? The actress who played Claire Lynch didn't know what she was letting herself in for when she agreed to do the story. The storyline was dropped and TNA tried to save their ass by having a lawyer admit that Claire Lynch, Daniels and Kaz were all lying about the pregnancy and they photoshopped it. The storyline was bad but when Claire Lynch was on the mic it produced some of the trashiest worst TV program you could ever watch. You could hear Mike Tanay and Taz cringing the last time she appeared on TV. This whole thing made TNA look so dumb for letting this happen on their show, and it had so much time devoted to it, so people changed the channel and never came back. Number 5, The Aces and Eights. It's hard to pinpoint the exact moment of the storyline when fans tuned out, but I'm going to assume it was the wedding angle. This storyline had already dragged on for far too long at this point. A bunch of masked bikers invaded TNA and tried to take over. It was cool until the reveal started happening, because they were all massive letdowns. Meanwhile, Bully Ray was being an ultimate babyface, and everyone could see what was coming. Bully Ray was also trying to marry Hogan's daughter Brooke, who also sucked, so it didn't help matters. After a huge build-up, the wedding went wrong, as they always do, and Taz and the Aces and Eights attacked everyone. Well, it was either this moment, or it was the August 1st warning. They'd hyped it up through the roof for ages, and Mystery Man was going to debut in TNA. Then it just turned out to be former MMA fighter Tito Ortiz. The fans were a mixture of disappointed and confused because they didn't know who this guy was or why they'd made such a fuss about him. He stood with his hands on his hips whilst the rest of the TNA roster had to pretend to be fake shocked. It was bad telly. Rumour has it he still stood with his arms crossed on that ramp today. Number 4, Hogan and Bischoff, four-sided ring. I'm not going to bang on about this too much because it's been done to death in this Hawks opinion, but when Hogan and Bischoff debuted in TNA 2010, they were all about change. On their first pay-per-view at Genesis 2010, they opened the show with a promo, and during that promo, you noticed, hey, the ring isn't six sides anymore. This is something TNA was known for, and it made their product stand out. It was now gone, and people were pissed. Hogan said, welcome to the new Impact Zone, and the crowd boo. They chant, we want six size. Hogan responds by saying, no more stinking playpen rings and we're changing it whether you like it or not. I don't think Hogan saw this fan backlash coming and he seemed genuinely annoyed. He threw everything TNA had achieved up to this point under the bus and dumped all over the TNA fans. A horrible way to open a pay-per-view and this confirmed most fans' fears about Hogan joining TNA. Many fans quit TNA after watching this pay-per-view and some quit as soon as Hogan and Bischoff signed with TNA. Number 3, Jeff Hardy, Victory Road 2011. Enough's been said about this one too, but I have to include this in the list because a lot of people definitely gave up on TNA when this one happened. Jeff Hardy was doing his heel persona as the Antichrist of professional wrestling and he was in the Immortal Factor as the main eventer of the group. He was cutting some great promos and it was refreshing to finally see Jeff doing something new after all these years. Problem was his heel turn happened to coincide with Jeff battling some of the worst demons in his life, and he still is today. Jeff was set to challenge for the heavyweight title of Victory Road 2011 against Sting, but Jeff turned up drugged up so he was unable to wrestle proper match. Fans at home who paid to watch Victory Road 2011 and fans in the arena that night were treated to a main event that lasted 90 seconds. Hardy spent most of it messing with the crowd and not throwing them his shirt. Sting forcefully hit the Scorpion death drop and pinned Hardy, despite his best attempts to kick out. The crowd chant this is bullshit as the show goes off the air, with the Stinger acknowledging the chant and agreeing with the fans. A lot of people packed it in for TNA at this point. They'd wasted their money on this terrible pay-per-view and didn't get the main event they'd been promised. People also lost faith in the company with the whole fiasco being allowed to happen in the first place. It made TNA look second rate. Number 2, Dixie Begs Hogan. This for me is the worst TNA moment on TV. There's a worse actual moment that caused fans to give up on TNA, but the visuals of this one are just worse. Dixie's being an annoying on-screen heel authority figure. That on its own may have caused some people to change the channel. Now, despite the negatives Hogan in TNA had, he was still a star, and the casual viewers and old school viewers would be watching TNA to see him. 
A storyline started up where Hogan's contract was about to expire. Dixie tried to buy Hogan off with a cheap watch from Asda and she asked him to get on board and ride the Dixie train. Hogan refused and told her that he quits. Dixie scurried after him like a desperate dog begging for food. She clung to his arm whilst Hulk said just let me go but Dixie wouldn't let him go and clung to his leg as Hogan tried to walk the ramp. It looks so funny now, but imagine watching this live as a TNA fan. The boss of the company is desperate enough to get down on her knees for the Hulk. It made Dixie look bad, it made TNA look bad, and it felt like the show was about to end for good with the Hulkster leaving the show, and the owner of the company seemingly so desperate. No one could take TNA seriously after that. Visually, this was the worst moment, but there's one worst moment because it represents something bigger. Number 1. AJ Styles leaving and losing to Magnus I think this is the one that signalled the end for most people watching the video today. AJ Styles was TNA. They could try and push whoever they wanted at the top of the card, but everyone still regarded AJ as the man. He was there from their first live show. He had incredible matches and he was the one the fans paid to see. That being said, by 2013 his act had grown a little bit stale, so in a welcome move he'd been taken off TV and given a new character. This was Emo Styles. He was a tweener and he sided with no one. He ended up as the number one contender for the heavyweight title, but at the same time he claimed he was out of contract with TNA. This led to some work style shoot interviews on TNA programming involving Dixie Carter. Dixie was also shooting on him saying things such as what happened to all those 5 star matches and claiming he didn't have the value to TNA that he used to have. He captured the title and walked out on TNA with Dixie begging him to re-sign with TNA. He started defending the title outside of TNA, but then they soon stripped him of the belt. In the meantime, enter Nick Aldis, Magnus. For me personally, I've always got on with Nick anytime I've worked with him, but recently I did that poll on the community and I was shocked how many people blame Magnus for them tuning out of TNA, so I've got to include that in this list. Sorry Nick. I understand TNA's need to build new stars at this point, but he wasn't exactly popular with the TNA crowd. I don't know who else they could have built up though at this point, there wasn't really anyone else waiting. But yeah, in AJ's absence, Aldis was crowned the new TNA champion. AJ eventually returned to TNA for one final match to see who the real champion was, a unification match. And let me tell you, this match sucked Sonny Siaki's ass. It was the most overbooked match you would have ever seen. It took 8 wrestlers interfering to help Magnus beat Styles, so it made him look bad too. So yeah, it's pretty dumb by TNA having the guy who's leaving booked so strongly. And that's it, AJ was never seen in TNA again after this. So within the same couple of months, both AJ and Hogan left TNA. That was two massive blows right there. A one-two punch to the gut. There was a lot of hope that AJ would re-sign with TNA and murmurs continued online for a few months afterwards. TNA wasn't the same without him. Then it was revealed TNA had offered him a new contract but massively lowballed him by offering a reduced salary of 60%. So the combination of Magnus being crowned the new TNA guy at the expense of Styles, because fans hadn't really warmed to him, and ultimately the realisation that this was the final match of AJ Styles caused long-time fans to quit watching TNA at this point. AJ was the main character of this TV show, and with him gone it felt like the show had ended. Why watch on? The main guy's gone. So yeah, that's the end of the list. Let me know if you felt pissed. If there's any moments that I missed, and if you don't agree with that, I'll give your neck a twist. 